In July of 2002, Eleanor Clitheroe woke up to find her name and face all over the news. Then president and CEO of the Ontario Electricity Utility, Hydro One, the media reported that Clitheroe had been fired from mismanaging company funds. It was a day, she says, she'll always remember. I was devastated, absolutely devastated. Hurt, embarrassed, crushed, uh, felt that I was of no value. It was awful. You know, we had reporters around the house. We left our house and went to another location so we could get some peace and quiet and to reflect. Clitheroe maintained throughout the scandal that she did nothing wrong and went on to file a libel and slander lawsuit against the man who told reporters she'd squandered company cash. While many remember the scandal, few know about the journey it led her on and what's become of her since leaving the halls of corporate power. For one thing, Clitheroe's name can now be found on the billboard at St. Luke's Anglican Church in Smithville, Ontario. Well, I'm the rector here. I've been here just about a year and I lead the worship. Raised in a Christian home, Clitheroe says faith has been a part of her life from the beginning. Growing up, she considered becoming a missionary, but followed her parents' advice to go to university instead. Well, when I went through law school, I wanted to be a criminal lawyer, but in law school, as it happens, I had some mentors who thought I'd be very good in corporate business. Through a series of opportunities, Clitheroe began climbing the corporate ladder, a period in her life she describes as exciting. But something else was also happening, she says. I didn't lose my faith, I still had my faith. But I kind of looked around and I thought, you know, everybody else is doing some fun things and that's not really in my faith. And, uh, you know, I'd like to try what other people are doing and nothing very serious, you know, just parties and things like that. It's, she it's says really throughout that time of discovery and exploration, mistakes were made. I got married, I got divorced all in my 20s. At some point as I was heading into um, my late 20s, I was pretty discouraged, pretty empty, and I... Uh, took some time to come back to my faith. During that break, she read a book about sailing some friends had given her, and when she was finished, she dove into sailing with a passion, she says. It eventually led her back to the shores of her faith. I was gonna do what this woman in the book had done. I was gonna take uh, some time off, sell my house, and sail around the world. Um, so I did all that, except I didn't sail around the world. I sailed down to uh, the Caribbean. And when you are alone on a boat for a long time in nature, God has a real good opportunity to speak to you. After being at sea for months, she came back to Canada and to corporate life, this time with her feet firmly planted in the sands of her faith. Got involved with uh, King Bay Chaplaincy, got involved with the Center for Corporate Ethics and Policy, and I joined a church and just re-embraced my faith. Although she'd chosen corporate life, Clitheroe says ministry was never far from her mind. She'd planned on going into full-time ministry in the future. But that change in direction came sooner than she bargained for, along with the sea of emotions, she says. I spent a week on retreat in two different locations to just work through all the anger and rage and upset and devastation. It was really her hurtful, harmful. A week ago, I was... Forgiveness is something Clitheroe has struggled with because of the way she was laid off. And while today she's forgiven, she admits it's been difficult to forget. There are still times that take me by surprise. Something that happens and I'll get my back up about it. And I'll think, gosh, I guess I haven't quite forgiven as deeply as I could be. There's still, it penetrated so deep that places I haven't even faced. But with the help of friends and family, she's moved on, she says. Precipitated by my wonderful counsel, lawyer, who said, you know, as you deal with the issue of feeling that things were unjust, you can't let bitterness take over. I don't want 10 years from now to be sitting opposite you and seeing someone who's, who's bitter and angry and hurt. Mm. I want to see someone who's gone on with their life. Clitheroe says that period in her life also taught her just how important community support is in helping people move forward after a crisis. That's why when she's not leading her congregation, she's leading the way into prisons as the head of Prison Fellowship Canada, a faith-based organization that supports prisoners, ex-offenders, and their families. When I lost my job, I was crushed. I felt disconnected socially. I felt disconnected economically. And I had all kinds of advantages. I had a strong family. I had friends. I had some financial resources. And I felt like it was a mountain to climb to 
get up and get going. And I thought, boy, if I'm not struggling, how much more so are they struggling? The organization also works alongside churches, teaching them how to reach out to ex-offenders in their community in what they call aftercare. That's after the inmate is leaving the prison and they need to settle into a church, settle into their community to help welcome uh, people into the community as best we can. And that can be a little frightening for people, so we try to teach and train churches how can they be an ex-offender friendly church. Carol is a visitor with us this morning. Carol Andrews knows firsthand how difficult it is to come back to a community after being incarcerated. Now involved with prison fellowship, Andrews spent eight years locked up after being convicted of second-degree murder in a domestic dispute. She's currently on full parole and has to see a parole officer once a month for the rest of her life. The mink farm, right? For Andrews, the support she's received from her family, the community, and her church has been a lifeline. It helps me stay on that straight and narrow, and it's very important because if you don't have that support or you don't have somebody you can turn to or, or rely on or lean on, it, it can either make or break an offender from either staying out into the community or going back. But not everyone is keen to have an ex-offender in their mists, she says, and it's something she's reminded of frequently. There's always a stigma attached, uh, even when looking for work. Some people look at you a little bit funny when they kind of find out what your offense is. Um, I have a serious offense, so because it involved uh, the death of an individual and it is murder, they, they kind of look at me as a little differently than whether if it was drug related or something that's normal in society. In the knowledge that God is here. Tara Bishop works with the families of offenders and says the church also has an important role in reaching out to those affected by crime. And we talked about the necessity for community, but community can't be a one-time deal, a one-time offer. It needs to be consistent and churches who are going to engage in this have to realize that it is going to take time to really have people trust you. It takes time in any relationship, let alone a relationship that's sort of born of, of some strife. And within that, uh, being trustworthy, being true to your word is going to help break down uh, that fear very quickly. And while being welcomed back into the church and the community has helped her rebuild, Andrew says forgiveness is what she's most concerned about. The main object of forgiveness for me is that God has forgiven me and that I have asked for his forgiveness. So as long as he has forgiven me and has um, given me that pardon, then I don't, you know, worry. Under the conditions of her parole, she can't contact the family of the man she killed but hopes that one day they'll know just how sorry she is. And so what if they were watching, what, what would you want to say to them? Well, I'm sorry for what had happened and uh, I've changed my life around and hope that the family could forgive me. Like Andrew's experience and the experience of many ex-offenders who try to re-enter the community, Eleanor Clitheroe knows that in the minds of some of the public, she'll always be guilty. It's a sadness in my life. I sometimes have to work very hard to ha have someone understand what I'm doing and how I'm doing it if they're interested, but some will not be. I have to accept that. But the truth is in all of our lives, we have people who like us, who don't like us, who support us, who, who don't support us, and in many respects, I'm no different than anybody else. And despite what some may still think about her, Clitheroe says she wouldn't change a thing. Would I go back and ask God to change my path? Probably not. While her journey from the halls of corporate power to the church pulpit has been an unconventional one, she considers everything that's happened a blessing. Well, I'm really blessed to be where I am. That's sort of first to be said. I love being here and I love being in prison ministry. I love being at St. Luke's in this community. So I'm glad that my path has brought me here. In Smithville, Ontario, Bridget Entry, 100 Huntley Street.